One very important element to PBR rendering, or at least the photorealistic representation of surfaces, is the idea of microfaceting. Very, very few surfaces in the real world are perfectly smooth. If you've ever seen any of those images taken under a microscope or electron microscope of things like a hair or skin, then you can see that up close these guys aren't smooth at all, they're as rugged as anything. And this is what the idea of incorporating microfaceting is, simply the observance that once you get down to a small enough scale, everything is rough, or at least almost everything is rough, to some greater or lesser degree. So we see the representation here in this simple picture, where we've got this dotted line. This would represent our actual modelled surface, you know, a polygon, if you will. And that is normally the thing that we would be rendering. But internally, and this is done in the shader, we represent that surface as having some kind of microscopic bumpiness or roughness. Now, of course, this isn't something that you would be creating yourselves. You would never model in this level of detail. You don't need to paint it on in a texture. And whilst you could, you know, theoretically do it with displacement maps, with of course some renderers supporting micro-pixel displacement or sub-pixel displacement, the kind of micro-facets or micro-roughness that we're talking about really is intended to be imperceptibly small. As such, this stuff is catered for and provided for in shader. It's part of the shading model of a given material. So even though we don't need to do anything ourselves to specifically create it, we do need to understand the idea of it because it helps to inform us about what Lightwave's renderer is actually doing and what the materials are actually doing. As well as, of course, the reason that they're doing it, which is to better represent photorealistic surfaces and thus give us something that is more physically based. Because, in reality, this is a physical feature of the shape of the actual surface. It is, as a consequence, something that will affect all types of shading. And we have already mentioned this briefly when we were talking about specular and reflection. It is, however, not limited just to that. So, for instance, here we see a ball, and notice here I've got a roughness setting. That is basically the setting for the microfacets. The higher the roughness, the you know, more lumpy the microfacets are, and the lower the roughness, the smoother the surface is on the microscopic level. At the minute, we've got no specular or anything else. We've just got diffuse reflection, and we see the result of that here. But if we go down to 0%, so totally smooth, then, as you can see, we get ourselves a slightly different result. Let's show that again. Let's go back up to 100% roughness. And there we go. We have a slightly different result in our diffuse shading. Of course, when it comes to specularity or reflection, so let's turn that up, this is basically reflective blur. Let's make our material nice and dark, just so this is more obvious. And we see that with 100% roughness, then we have a very blurry reflection. But of course, as we're coming down to much smoother surfaces, then we're getting these shiny, glossy reflections. And of course, with, you know, intermediate roughness values, then we're starting to get this reflection blur. We have had reflection blur, of course, in previous versions of Lightwave. It was a slightly differently done effect. And of course, we've got the old fashioned cheat specular that we already mentioned, which was intended to give soft highlights. That again was a way of faking this microfaceted behavior. But now this microfaceting is properly built in and accounted for. Of course, simple roughness in microfacets like this are taken to be isotropic. That is to say that the roughness is just kind of like a pebble surface or a gravel surface, right? It's more or less even in all directions. But another form of microfaceting that we should be familiar with is anisotropic microfaceting. No doubt many of you will be familiar with anisotropic reflections or anisotropic specular, where we get these streaky highlights. Of course, if you are familiar with it, then you'll probably be familiar with the fact that this comes when we have brushed metal. I do say brushed metal, it can actually be any type of surface. 
because this is a micro faceting effect. Simply what we're creating, and it's more obvious if we look at a, you know, sort of a texture map for it here, this would be something like a bump map. We are looking at micro facets that are brushed in line with each other. In this case, in a circular pattern, but it could be in a straight line pattern. So it's not just this, you know, random scattering of micro facets. They're all in this sweep in the same direction. And thus that pattern of roughness and the highlight or indeed diffuse changes that it gives will alter the appearance and give us these more streaky surfaces. As I say, commonly we think of an isotropic reflection in terms of things like brushed metal, but it does come up other places as well, like for instance wood grain. The microfaceting of wood surfaces or grainy wood surfaces is anisotropic. We've got all of these tiny little grooves running along together in one direction rather than another. Grainy woods will often exhibit different highlighting from different angles, essentially streaked highlights. The highlights are much softer, they're not metallic highlights, but they do exhibit similar features. As such, here again is a place where even though Lightwave does all of the micro facet calculation and work for us, having in mind the actual microstructure of the surface that we're attempting to represent will help us out. And of course, there are other places where this comes into play, which is to say, what is the definition of micro? We have, of course, said that it's things that are too small to see, microscopic, right? But of course, that's sort of relative to your point of view. For instance, let's take something like the ocean. Now, this is pretty lumpy and bumpy, and we see all of the little peaks and crests of the waves and the, you know, turbulence in the ocean surface. And certainly standing there on the beach, looking at the ocean surface, you would hardly say that these are micro details, right? This is not micro faceting of the surface. However, once we get up in space and we're looking down on the ocean surface, it's a totally different story. Once we get 200 miles up above the surface of the Earth, then even a 150 foot monster tsunami is minuscule we would barely see it as a scratch on the surface of the ocean. And as such, all of these little wave peaks become, from this point of view, a microsurface. This is why when we see these shots from orbit and we can see the reflection of the sun on the ocean surface, we get this very broad, soft, specular highlight. The Earth's oceans are not glossy, with sharp reflections. They have these very soft reflections. And that is simply because what we're looking at is a micro faceted surface, at least from this point of view. And so there we have it. That is micro faceting, worth keeping in mind when we are doing PBR setup of materials, and something that we'll want to think about when we are thinking exactly what the type of surface it is that we are trying to recreate. Of course, as we said, much of this is done in shader for us, and all of those little details about how the different materials work and the effects that we get out of them, we will see as we move forward with the training.